This side of the quick speed shop, check it out. All kinds of stuff going on in the Dodge. Oh, what's that? Electric? Come on now. In this video, we're gonna do a whole bunch of assembly on the front of the truck, radiator, all kinds of stuff. Get this thing ready to fire. There's gonna be controversy. I'll tell you about the radiator in a second. Let's go ahead and uh, get into it. So off camera, I've been working, done, doing a lot of little things off camera. I got the battery installed. I made a little uh, hold down here out of flat stock. Got that all installed in here. I've hooked up all the electric under the hood. I've got new battery cables, one out cables, a battery cutoff switch uh, to the starter junction thingamajig there. Got the ignition all hooked up. All the wires are under the hood installed. I've added an aftermarket, ow, an aftermarket water temperature and oil pressure gauge. So where the radio would be, this truck was radio delete. I put in a oil pressure and water temperature gauge and I got two toggle switches here for uh, running accessories. I've got a vintage sun tack mounted to the dash. Yes, I did drill some holes in the dash pad. I'm sure I'm gonna get some static from that. Jordan, I'm talking to you. But guess what? I wanted it seen through the windshield and it wasn't a good way to hang it, especially the column with this uh, key release and stuff on the column. There wasn't a good way to hang it, so burp, right through the mint dash pad. Well, it wasn't really mint, it was been painted and the top of it's all nasty. But anyways, don't worry, that's where I wanted it. So uh, I also added, where's my light? Hold on a minute. I also added an auxiliary fuse panel here under the dash um, because these trucks have uh, glass fuses in a dashboard. I, I added this little 10 circuit panel here and it uses a uh, blade style fuses and I'm running the uh, those two toggle switches and the the power for the gauges off this and it comes directly off the battery. So this has got you know I got 10 spots where I can add more things like a CB or a brake controller stuff like that but the uh, the dash is all put together now ready to roll and um, the reason I put the oil pressure gauges in here, this truck doesn't have a gauge, it just had an idiolite, and I wanted an oil pressure gauge, and I, I ended up buying these two at a swap meet, brand new, and I got the water temperature, even though it's got temp gauge, we'll actually have, uh, you know, degreed indicators there. And you can see this truck is low miles, 53,939, that's original, it hasn't been over yet. So we're ready to go on the inside, and I think we're almost ready to fire the motor, Probably tomorrow I'm going to do some wrenching tonight, but I think it is ready. The next thing that's got to go on, oh, I put the headlights in, I put the lower panel on here. Those are hooked up. These are brand new Savania, uh, high intensity Savania headlights. And everything else is hooked up under the hood as far as I can tell. All the wires landed where they need to land. Everything that wasn't used, I had marked unused when I took the harness out, so everything's good. Um, these wires here for the plow frame, which I have to put on before we can start it because I need to hook the hydraulics up. Over here, I did buy a brand new aluminum radiator. Uh, this is a Champion. I've had good luck with these radiators. They're welded aluminum. I put one in my, my boogie van, and it's gone 12,000 miles, no problems whatsoever. And I believe I also have one in my Studebaker truck that is 10 or so years old. And uh, they're really nice quality for what they are. I forget what it costs. I want to say like $300, but uh, they have uh, replacement radiators for these trucks that have like plastic tanks like uh, like a new car. But I don't like plastic and aluminum radiators. They tend to want to leak at the tanks and stuff. So I like fully welded aluminum radiators. Oh, man, look at this. It's mint. Let's get it out. Ta-da, look at that. Bam! That's awesome. And these are uh, these are like a show radiator. You can see they're all TIG welded. They're all polished aluminum. These are really, really nice radiators. But what we're going to do to this... Now here's where the controversy starts. I just spent, like I said, almost $300 on a nice aluminum radiator. You know what we're going to do? We're going to paint it black because there's nothing worse than a vehicle that didn't have aluminum radiator in it and it has an aluminum radiator in it and you can see the aluminum radiator through the grill. There's nothing worse than that. I'll tell you why. 
because the front of this truck behind the grill is meant to be black, all black. Black radiator, black, you know, core support. It's all meant to be black from the factory. So when you see through the grill, you don't see any shiny crap in there. It's all meant to be black. And I hate it when people put aluminum radiators, because that's what predominantly sell now are aluminum radiators, in cars that didn't have aluminum radiators and they don't paint the radiator. It looks horrible. So we're going to paint this fancy radiator flat black right now. Watch this. Now watch this. It's just this easy. I just got the gun out. I was shooting a, shooting a little video here. I shot a... I shot a clip for this for the Instagram, but that's why there's a little black paint in here. But look, all you gotta do, take some flat black, look. It's just that easy. You just rattle can it right on there. Look at that. Nobody's gonna know that you got a $300 high dollar aluminum high flow radiator in your old truck if you just take a little bit of spray paint and just paint it black. It ain't no thing. It goes right on there just like this, look at that. You don't gotta paint the whole radiator. You can leave the tank shiny if you want on the back side under the hood. You know, it's, it ain't no thing, but the stuff you can see through the grill, paint it black. It's just that easy look. Not a big deal. It just goes right on just like that. Boom. A little black paint. This, this is flat black. Nobody's going to know. I'm going to wipe the handprints off the tanks. I'm going to shoot the whole front of this black. Nobody's going to know. I think the upper tank is behind the core support, so I won't bother painting that. But all this that's behind the grill that you can see, look at that. Little black, paint it black, hit the track. Ain't no thing. Now you're gonna wanna paint it from both angles because it's kinda hard to get the paint on the fins. Uh, you know, so I'm gonna paint it here from the top side then I'm gonna flip around and paint it from the body, bottom side. But it's not gonna hurt the cooling, it's not gonna do nothing. It just makes it look a thousand times better behind the grill. Now it's just, oops, it's just that easy. The paint's still wet. It doesn't even matter because you can't see it. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dro oops, drop it right into place here. Ain't no thing like a ding on. Where are the bolts? Can't see nothing. Dang it now. Boom, there's one. Apparently that's not the correct height for that. Now, what in the world? This is where I screwed up. I should have test fit it before I got carried away. I got all wrapped up in the painting. Why won't this? This has got to go like here. What in the world? Why don't any of these holes line up? They're not even close. Oh no, you know why? Dang it! I used the core support center section out of the 87 Ram Charger core support I had, and that must mount the radiator different than the 80 radiator. Son of a gun. I ordered an 80 radiator. Are you kidding me? I ordered an 80 radiator, but she don't fit the brackets. I gotta re-drill it now. Of course, I just painted it and the paint is wet. Bonehead. Well, for crying in the sink. Anyways, am I gonna see that through the radiator? Nope. I painted that. Uh, I probably gotta paint the front of the tank as well because I can probably see that through the grill. Which you guys can't see right now, but I'll do that later because I can shoot that in the truck. Just trying to see if the upper bolt holes are going to line up at all. Maybe. Hmm. It's very odd. Very odd indeed. I might be able to, the upper The upper bolts might work. Let's try it. I'm trying also not to hit the stupid radiator on the fan. Okay, that bolt goes into there. Oh, no, nuts. That's not gonna reach either. These upper holes, I just gotta elongate the slots a little bit and it should go. 
the fan shroud then would probably bolt on. But the lower holes are definitely way out of whack. All right, let me play around with this. Let the paint dry a little bit because now I got to touch it. And uh, we'll get it mounted up in here, get the hoses on it, and then we'll be one step closer. All right. I've drilled the radiator out. Hopefully it'll bolt in. And I uh, found the fan shroud that's in place on the engine now. So let's try this again. I got no bolts. <laughs> no bolts to start it on. Okay. There's one, oh, there's one. I'm hoping the upper bolt hole was the right location for uh, up and down height wise, because, because that's what I went with for height, but it seems like that's about where the uh, fan shroud wants to be. But we'll find out in one second. All right. Okay, now the, here we go. The upper bolts go in. Let's see if the bottom bolts go in. I just kind of guesstimated. And that hole is nowhere to be found. Son of a gun. The, uh, I measured this side, the other passenger side must be different for some reason. I don't know why that would be. Let's just see if the fan shroud is anywhere close to where it's got to be fan-wise. Oh, actually, yep, hold on. That goes there. Yes. But, hmm. I need some bolts. How close are we to the bottom? Well, I can get my finger in the bottom. All right. So crisis averted, the radiator fits. And I have the upper radiator hose. Let's just double check, make sure. Oop. Yeah, it's going to work out all right. This hose is way too long for some reason, but... Yeah, that's gonna. All right, just a little bit of fitting. That's the first time I've had one of these champion radiators. Well, like I said, I used the. That's it's probably my fault because I changed the center of the core support to 87, and Dodge must have put in a different radiator in the 87 trucks than the 80 trucks. But I just gotta take the radiator back out. I just gotta sh uh, file this hole just a little bit. The radiator's up like an eighth inch because I and when I drilled it, I drilled it a little bit crooked. I'll set it, ream it out just a little bit so I can set the radiator down. It actually helped me on bottom fan clearance, but it's going to bolt in here good. And behind the grill, like I said, you can't tell that's an aluminum radiator here. But this is a nice piece. And there's one more thing that's got to go on. I just want to eyeball, make sure everything's going to work. These early Dodges had the radiator tank up on the core support here, and they would always get broke because people would lean on them, and the plastic would get delicate. But... This uh, goes here somewhere. Anyways, we'll make that work. I'll have to put a longer hose on for the the uh, overflow. Not a big deal, I'll clean that up. But yeah, there we go. I'll just clean up the bolts. I'm gonna mark this one from the outside, redrill this one. I don't know why that's off. I just, I thought they'd be symmetrical. Apparently not, thanks Dodge. But uh, yeah, bam, aluminum radiator pretty much installed. All right, it's the next day. I had to run to Napa. Bailed me out here. Here is a lower coolant hose and it fit the water pump, but the this side of the hose didn't fit the radiator. So I went to Napa and I had him look up the correct lower hose, which he gave me this one. Uh, or actually I had this one, but he gave me one that looked just like it except Napa. So I said, that's not gonna work. So I went in the back and I dug around and I found a hose that's got the bigger end on both sides, it's all the bigger size. 
and I can cut this down to make it work. Uh, right about here, I can cut it and it should work. It's, it'll get me where I gotta go. Don't know what it fits, but there's the part number. Got a couple of new hose clamps and uh, I'm gonna try to drag the spring. Usually lower hose has a spring in it. I'm gonna try to pull the spring out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That's not good for it. Let's see if we can get it out without wrecking it. Eh, there we go. I'm gonna throw the spring in the lower hose. This just prevents it from collapsing. It's nice to, a lot of hoses, they don't put them in them anymore, but it's nice to have them when you need them. So I'm gonna throw, throw that guy in there. It's not gonna hurt nothing. I'll put the lower hose on. I put the overflow tank on here. I cleaned it up the best I could. The plastic is pretty grungy. Um, I need to extend the hose that goes to the radiator. I'm actually gonna make, I think this is like quarter inch or five sixteenths. I'm gonna make a bit of copper, nickel copper brake line and bend up a, a copper one. And then we'll just use a little short piece of the hose to hook it up there. Whoa, so that's in. Um, I'll put this on the radiator. You can see it's painted there. And like I was saying, that looks mint. Can't even tell it's in there. Okay, I got the hoses all hooked up. I guess the next best thing to do is fill her up with antifreeze. This is, uh, I already mixed it up here. We're fitty fitty. So I'll dump her on in. I don't like this new, like, multiple antifreeze it's yellow or whatever i don't like it i like my yellow, my antifreeze to be green i had a question on the drain plug on this which way it went but i think i've got it that must be good don't see any leaks yet Actually, I should open this tank so it can b breathe. Boom. No leaks. I've got more antifreeze. I just, this is what I had on the shelf. I gotta go mix up another two gallons here. Shouldn't be anywhere near full yet. Don't see any leaks yet. Don't hear any leaks. Think we're okay so far. We got all new hoses, all new fittings, all new freeze plugs in the block. So we should be, should be okay. What do I, oh, it's just dirt. Okay, I gotta go mix up some more antifreeze. I'll fill this up. And then uh, I got the plow frame over here. Well, ah, heft that in the place, get that mounted up here, um, get the hoses hooked back up, get the cylinder on it, and then that should be all that's required to start it. I made a short on YouTube, this is funny, a little story, I made a short on YouTube about spray painting the front of the radiator black. You wouldn't believe the people flipping out. I maybe you've seen the comments on the short, I got in a big fight with a guy about it, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, bro, like, you responded like multiple times in multiple comments. Like, I'm just saying, like, I've done this to every aluminum radiator I've ever done, like, the last 15 years, including, like, my buggy van that's gone 12,000 miles in the heat, in traffic, never runs hot. It doesn't hurt it to paint it. Every single copper radiator ever made was completely painted with black radiator paint, which is way thicker than a little bit of I put on here. Oh, and by the way, the only reason these are painted when they're copper is so they don't corrode. Aluminum doesn't corrode as much, so there's no reason to paint them. And the automotive companies aren't going to paint them if they don't have to. But guess what? You can paint it, and it ain't going to hurt it. Everybody needs to calm down. That's all I got to say about that. So, yep, there we go. So the uh, radiator's 87.6% 80 full. I filled up the power steering pump. All the way up to the top by accident but the box is pretty much dry and the hoses are dry so hopefully they'll suck it down and not blow it everywhere so that's good let's 
put this on. I noticed I don't have any bolts, but I think the plow frame can go into the frame of the truck. Oh my God, let's just bolt a big chunk of steel to the front of it. This is factory Meyer snow plow action. Boom, look at that. Covered to pine needles and I didn't paint it or nothing. Sandblasting sand, moss, perfect. Um, I want to spray the frame. Let's see, does it go inside the frame? I think it does. What the heck does that bolt to? Does it go outside the frame? I'm pretty sure it goes in the frame somehow. Yeah, let me, uh, ah, I can't reach. Dang it. Hold on a minute. Ah, there we go. I want to put a little fluid film inside the frame rails. Where these are going to go. Yup. Boom. Look at that. And I think I need some bolts, which I ah, don't have any bolts. I don't even know what size those are supposed to be, but I think this will hold itself up. Oh my God. Just bolt a bunch of junk on the front of the truck. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Here we go. Oh yeah. Get in there. Boom. Something like that. Will it hold it? Oh. Uh oh. Look at it. It holds itself up. Don't fall out. Look at that. This thing's got more lights on it than a Christmas tree. What do we need here? Why did none of the bolts line up? It's got to line up. It came off. Oh no, it didn't come off this truck. It came off the 80 frame. Oh, fail. Does that mean, oh, there is, oh no, the, 80, the 75 had the same plow frame on it. Why? Hopefully the holes are in the same spot, which it looks like they might be ish, ish. Hmm. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah, it's gonna bolt on there. All right. Get out. Boom. Got this sucker bolted most of the way on here. It uses the factory bumper bolts here. Seven sixteenths bolts. There's one, two, three, four, five bolts each side, and there is big long uh, arm plates that I didn't put on yet because they're over here. Or gussets, these are like, geez, these things are like 5 16 steel. And they go down to one of these lower bolts on the lower plow frame and attach up here, something like that. Boom. I'll put them on here in a little bit. They're, uh, I never painted them. They're kind of grungy. But I think, I, I didn't try it yet, but I think the grill will fit in. Hopefully it will because I don't want to take this all back off, put the grill on. So let's see. I gotta feed all the lights, all the light harness through the grill. And I think the grill needs a feed in here at some kind of an angle of the. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Are you kidding me? Hmm. Maybe. Oh no. What on there? It's uh beginning to look like it's not gonna fit. Oh, 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 oh. It's fitting. Dang it. Come on, man. It's almost there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. Come on. Ow. You're killing me. It's like the DD Speed Shop way where we just. Aha! Got it. Don't worry about the finish. It's fine. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. 
kind of goo is this? I got some kind of goo on it. Uh, the reason we need to do that is the wires need to come through the grill. And of course, you can't reach the wires once you put the grill on. So this is what the problem. Oh, wait a minute. I can. Aha. There we go. There we go. Get in there. All the harness. Does it reach through the grill enough to... All the connections end up behind the grill, but you need to make the connections. Why is this up in the air? What am I... Oh, I'm on players. There we go. You need to make the wire connections through the grill. And they go like something like that. Goes there. Man, this is awesome. Are you guys seeing it? Ooh, I love it. Tin grill dodge. All right. So I got the plow frame all bolted on good. I put the screws in the grill. I've been putting the hydraulic hoses on here. Um, they got this little distribution block. This hose here that's looped together, this is the hose that goes to the uh, rams for the turn on the plow. And it's a quick disconnect. I think this one goes to the left ram. And then the left ram's got a hose with a male end that plugs into this. But when you're not using it, when the plow is off like this, you go and you loop it to itself and stick it together. That way the system is looped on itself. And uh, this just kind of like hangs out in front of the truck, which is a little, little weird, but that's how they did it back in the day. I'm trying to think of some way where I maybe I can put a second disconnect in and then make a, make a short little loop where I can not have this great big hose on here and just leave them on the plow. So you're not running around with this great big thing off the bumper all the time, but we'll get to that uh, later on, I guess. I'm uh, I'm painting the cylinder. I cleaned that all up. I'm painting some yellow on there for like Meyer yellow. But right now, um, oh, like I said, I got a broken fitting here. I, can, I didn't find one, so I'm going to have to go to the store in the morning. It's late at night now, so nobody's open. But while we're waiting on that, let's go do electrical check. Let's hook up the battery. I want to try some of the lights, see if they work. And uh, I guess if I just go, I charge the battery up. And I'm going to go and crank her down here. Oops. I do have a <clears throat> battery disconnect switch that I can kill it if there's a problem. Um, very easily, but... We'll not make this super tight so we can get this off here if we have to. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch. Fire check. Nothing happened, but the uh, truck should be hot now. So let's, uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to pull on, let's pull on the parker, marker lights and see if they do anything. What do we got? Oh, I see something. Aha! Now we don't have marker lights down there. That's curious, but we got them up here. Ain't that a thing? Oh, look at this. The cab lights, now, son of a gun, I tested all those lights when I put them on there and everything worked. But now it's not, oh, shoot, what was that? No, oh, it's the radiator cap, got in there. See the cab lights up there? Why are they not? Hello? Oh, there you go, just got a tap on it. They're a little, uh, the contacts might be a little dirty, but hello, hello, you, hello, yellow, yellow, yellow. Well, anyways, we got most of them going. What do I got working in here? Oh, I've got dash lights. I'll bring you guys inside in a second. Ooh, the tack is already also lit up. Awesome. So let me hit the headlights. Oh, we got headlights. I see them. 
Still don't have any running lights down here. They both could be out though. So that is low beams maybe? That's low beams, so we got high beams? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, that's high beams right there. Why is there no high beam indicator? Hmm. That's definitely high beam. So that's low beam. All right, we can turn them off. Let's pull on the auxiliary headlights and see if they work. Uh-oh. I don't see anything happening. Huh. Well, I ain't good. Oh, you know what? Maybe the ignition has to be on to run those. Whoa. Careful. I'm going to turn the ignition on. One click. Now we'll try the auxiliary lights. Also, no. Hmm. Does the horn work? Nope. Well, son of a gun. Does the fan work? No. Oh, let's try it now. Nope. Nope. Uh, I'm going to, can you hear me? Yep. I'm going to try the starter, ready? Eh? Oh, it cranks. It's got a little bit of a gallop to her. We got a turn signal. I see it blinking. Oh yeah. So we got a blinker there. Are these lower lights blinking at all? No. And we got no man, we got very limited light action. I don't like it. Got no horn. All right, it's the next day. Hold on, here I come. I'm bringing the snowplow ram, which I've rattle canned. You're gonna love it. Bam! Bright yellow, just like Meyer was. And we'll hang this guy on here. I went and I got a fitting at the store, quarter, uh, quarter inch. I just got a black iron 90 and made it and it worked. Okay, that goes there, um, into the, into the unit there, ah. So now we can hook up the ram, hook up our last hose, and then I think we'll be ready to, oh, there goes the paint off the ram already. This is very poorly rattle canned. Well, actually, I stripped it all down to bare metal and primed it and painted it. It was just painted yellow right on the bare steel. That's why it was all chipped off. But it probably won't last. It's just cheap Rust-Oleum yellow. But guess what? Bam. Why is this lock not not locking? There we go. So that is the ram there. Uh, where's the third line? Number three. Where is it? Here it is. Let's see. And this goes under here. This goes in the side of the ram. This is your lifting, <laughs> lifting line. Oh shoot, I ran out of my, where's my, ah. Lost my thread goober stuff. Been putting a uh, pipe joint compound on all these pipe joints. Old school, look how old this is, Main USA. It's old school can, but. It works good. It's like gray goo. And it, ah. you know, it's for like gas pipes and stuff like that, but it should seal since this is quarter inch pipe thread. It should seal these guys up too. I just been goobering it up on the fittings instead of like these had like Teflon tape on it, which 
you know, help seal, but that's more for lubrication than anything. But we'll put a little bit of actual thread sealer, pipe dope sealer on here. Hopefully this won't be full of oil. Or maybe it will be, I don't remember. Nope. Aha. I can tighten those bolts up later, it doesn't matter. So there we go. The front of the hydraulic action is all set. Bought some uh, snow plow oil, hydraulic fluid for snow plows. It's good to minus 50. I think it just has something to keep moisture out of it so you don't get ice in your system. And I'm just going to come over to the reservoir over here on the tank. I'm just going to dump some right in it. Ooh, it's like, whoa, oh, shoot, there it goes everywhere. Hold on. Ah! Dang it. There it goes. Spill it everywhere already. It's like bluish green. I don't know how much we need. So I think now we should be ready to try to fire the engine. I monkeyed around a bunch last night playing with the lights. I figured out the plow lights. Uh, the plow lights do work over here when you turn the headlights on and then you pull the plow lights on. It turns off the regular headlights and turns the plow lights on. So those do work. I have power going to the marker lights and the front turn signals in the wiring harness. I used a uh, test light, but I've got bad sockets or bad grounds or both because the sockets are kind of rusty in those lights and I'm not, I don't think I've got a good ground of those. That's why those lights aren't working. And uh, I tested the wires out back. I have tail light and turn signals out back, the back of the truck. Um, I don't have dash lights, even though I have dash light power to the fuse and the fuse harness. So there's something wrong in the back of the dash. That's where I had a long few videos ago I had broken pins on the back of the dashboard and we resoldered them and one of them that was broke and resoldered was the power to the whole thing and I wonder if maybe that's something with that so we don't need any of that stuff to start it the single crank uh, I'm just gonna nurse feed it here from under the hood I might actually hook up my starter button like I said earlier so I can crank it under the hood here and see what's going on under the hood with the engine. All right, band, there we go. That's it. Everything is ready. Look at it. It looks glorious. We're ready for the first firing of the motor, but you're going to have to come back next time. I'm going to roll on the key. We're going to put some fuel in the fuel, make it happen. Our carburetor, Holly 600 right there, bam. And we're going to see if this Magnum 5.9 liter awesome V8 engine will fire to life. So come back next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you firing the motor. Hopefully it's not junk because I don't know. I bought it sight unseen and we'll find out next time here at the Quick Speed Shop.